Serious, therapists, what is something people are afraid to tell you because they think it's weird, but that you've actually heard a lot of times before? I work in an older adult service for people with dementia and mental health problems. I see a lot of family members slash carers feeling ashamed of the fact that they are finding it incredibly difficult to care for someone that has dementia or a chronic mental health problem. Carer burnout is a real issue and people need to know that it's not easy to see someone you love struggling every day, or slowly fading away month by month. Carers and family members desperately need time for themselves and need to know that it's okay to feel the way that they do. No one is superhuman and we all have our own needs. It's why we have therapy groups for carers. It's okay to struggle to look after someone and you should in no way feel ashamed of having those feelings. Unwanted intrusive thoughts are normal and do not mean you are a bad person, yes, even intrusions of sexual slash religious slash moral themes. By definition, these are thoughts that are unwanted bc they go against your own values and highlight what you don't want to do, e.g., a religious person having unwanted blasphemous images pop into their mind, or a new parent having unwanted sexual thoughts about their new baby. However normal these thoughts are, over 90% of the population, the moral nature of these thoughts mean that often people experience a lot of shame and take many years before they first tell someone about them. That they hear voices. I've found that a lot of people aren't familiar with their own internal dialogue or self-talk and that this is typically normal internal processing. A lot of people think that they are hearing voices and hallucinating. There are some pretty simple questions we can ask to determine if it's hallucinating or just internal dialogue, and most often it's the latter. Recurring intrusive thoughts about harming others. Can be hurting slash killing someone or sexual fantasies about children or relatives. Usually people take a while to admit those. The reality is that if you are having them frequently you aren't dangerous. You probably have OCD and are terrified that you might be dangerous. It was once explained to me that intrusive thoughts are often not things we're wanting to do, but our brain basically wants to bring it up and contemplate about something bad that could happen so it's ready to respond. Clients become quite fearful of admitting that they weren't successful since the last time they had a session. This could include not succeeding in using a coping skill that they're learning about, or not being able to complete a homework assignment I gave them. Humans aren't robots, and therapy is a lot of work. That being said, I don't expect people to be perfect as they start to work on themselves in a positive way. It takes time to really commit to change, especially in relation to trauma or conflicted views that an individual holds. I feel as if the client doesn't want to let me down as their therapist, but these failure events are just as important to talk about as successful moments. I do a lot of trauma work. Many people who have experienced molestation or sexual assault feel ashamed and confused because their bodies responded. Having an erection slash lubrication or even an orgasm does not mean you wanted the sexual contact and it is still assault. Clients often hold a lot of shame and, and confusion about this. They wonder if it means they wanted it or if there is something wrong with them. It is a tough thing to work through because of this. Assault is assault. Sometimes human bodies respond to sexual touch even when we don't want that touch. Intrusive thoughts about sex with family members or, in their mind, nymphomania as a result of childhood sexual trauma, an adult. Hypersexuality isn't often discussed as one of the PTSD symptoms, so people walk around with so much shame about it. I never thought of this particular behavior slash thought problem as related to my PTSD. Something to chew on. Thanks. A common one in the time I was a therapist was simply I don't know. You'd be surprised how reluctant people are to admit that they don't know why they're feeling how they are. But that's exactly why you're or were, I'm not a therapist anymore, sat there with me, so we can figure out why together. It always put me in mind of a line from America by Simon and Garfunkel. Kathy, I'm lost I said, though I knew she was sleeping. I'm empty and aching and I don't know why. That Simon and Garfunkel line is one of my favorites ever. It's so full of emotion. It's beautiful and sad. Some of the most common ones have been visual and or auditory hallucinations and suicidal thoughts. I usually hear I don't want to be put in the hospital or I don't want you to think I'm crazy. Also, basically anything sexual. I'm not going to judge you for being into BDSM, fetishes, etc. Honestly, I've probably heard it before and I'm not here to judge you. Same goes with any non-consensual experiences, especially if we're working through trauma. Every time I meet with a therapist for the first time I tell them I've had suicidal ideation almost non-stop since I was a kid, and that it's normal for me. The first time I got hospitalized, it was because I told someone I was having suicidal thoughts and they called the cops. The whole scenario was traumatic and I'm terrified of it happening again. If I have any thought a therapist might try to hospitalize me because I'm having suicidal thoughts, which, again, are normal for me, 
then I can't trust them enough to be my therapist. It took me a long time to be comfortable saying it out loud without fear of hospitalization. Psychologist here. Basically, anything having to do with sex. There's so much shame. Sexual abuse. Sexual fantasies and fetishes. Erectile dysfunction. Infidelity. Becoming sexually assertive. I've been told that I have a good psychologist's face. I try not to have a strong reaction to normalize the discussion. With adolescents, they are extremely anxious to tell me if they've relapsed or aren't doing well. They cut one night or they were suicidal. They're having a lot of negative self-talk or panic attacks. They'll come in, pretending everything is okay. It's usually in the last 10 to 15 minutes that they'll say something. They'll reveal that they worried they'd let me down. That I'd be disappointed in them. It usually turns into a discussion about policing other people's feelings and tolerating emotions. I explain that I care about their well-being and it's my job to monitor my emotions and reactions, not their role. I'd say a common one is believing that there's something innately, irreparably wrong with them that makes them unable to ever truly fit in. For a lot of people it's such a deeply ingrained belief that it can be extremely painful to acknowledge or express, regardless of the level of personal success in their lives. The worst is knowing beyond doubt that you are holding a false belief about yourself and yet not being able to change it. I've spent long enough in therapy trying to figure out what's wrong with me to know there's no there there, but the ingrained pattern of thinking doesn't go away. Two topics come up with regularity, when someone discloses to me that they were sexually abused as a kid, and or when some is experiencing suicidal ideation. Both are something I hear from clients every single day, and so I don't find it weird at all. But, when I have someone in front of me who's talking about it for the first time, I know it's important to validate the fact that even though I might be talking about this for like the fifth time that day, they have never talked about this ever, and are in need of gentle care to feel safe. Yes. That validation was life-changing for me. I talked about my early childhood sexual trauma to a few people and counselors to try to process and was often told that what I went through wasn't that bad or someone else had it worse. It wasn't until a few years ago that our marriage counselor validated my feelings in front of my husband that I truly felt hurt and was able to start healing. As someone in the substance abuse field I know that it's difficult for clients to tell me they got high with a parent but it's something I get told fairly regularly. It's kinda sad. I've had patients tell me their parents used to give them drugs as kids to basically sedate them. It's soul crushing. I'm support worker, social worker, not a therapist. I've had clients too scared to tell me their accomplishments because they think they should only be bringing their problems to case management and that if we see them getting better that we won't care slash prioritize them as much. Another is hard drugs. We don't endorse it by any means but we have to know if we need to keep an eye out for inappropriate behavior and overdoses. We never get mad at them for being high, we just want to send them to their room to sober up. 